And that YouTube is the sound of a Starlink dish dying and going to heaven. Hi, it's a Toaster here from Aussie 8. I probably need to rewind a bit and take you back, in fact, to my very first YouTube video, which is where I disassembled the phased array from the mounting hardware just using a screwdriver. I then followed that up with one where I mounted the hardware into the car, but because I didn't have the parts for a proper 12 volt setup, I just used an inverter and the original Starlink router and plugged that all back into the phased array using the original long cable. And then, yeah, we hit the road. So that's where I've, I left you. Um, so we got some good results um, on the road. Here's one here um, with pretty decent downloads and uploads while traveling at highway speeds. We did get some that were faster than that. But we did have an issue with overheating. Uh, it's pretty hot around these parts. Uh, I think the other thing that didn't help is that the router was buried under all of our luggage. Um, so that really spurred me on to, to finish off the project. So doing um, research on the internet, there's a couple of different people to show you how to do the 12 volt setup. I decided to follow Colby's method here. I pretty much ordered the same parts that he shows on screen. And yeah, there was one variation which I'll go into in a minute and maybe that's part of my downfall. But if you do do research on the internet, you'll find there's essentially two methods. So I've got method A here, which is where you cut one end off the 75 foot cable, cut the connector off, and then wire up an ethernet jack with the pair swaps that you can support the Starlink um, PoE standard and then plug that into an injector and then into your own router. Method B is uh, rather than cutting anything off this 75 foot cable, you preserve that cable, which means you can actually just then go back to the original Starlink setup. So you buy an ethernet adapter from Starlink, you cut off the connector off that, I wire an ethernet jack up to that with the swapped pairs and then into an injector and then into your router. Method C was one that I came up with. Uh, so we've got the phased array. Um, I decided to use just the Ethernet adapter, but uh, swapped it round and then cut the connector, the thick end off um, the adapter, wired up an Ethernet jack there with the swapped wires, and then plugged that into a PoE injector and then into a router. So as you saw in the intro, something went horribly wrong. So what was my downfall? Um, was using the Ethernet adapter in the wrong direction not a good idea? Or did I just mess up the Ethernet wiring? So before we do a post-mortem, let me show you what my um, setup looked like. So I uh, took a Ethernet adapter and cut the large connector off one end and then wired up a ethernet jack onto that cut portion. That's what that looked like. For the cable coming from the phased array, I had to shave a few millimeters of plastic off this housing uh, just because the shape of the connector was slightly different and so it wouldn't fit in there. The grommet here also prevented it from going in easily, so I removed that too. Uh, so yeah, in the car, we got a USB-C cable running from the console to a Aero 6 router. So this is a really good router for a car setup because it can run directly off USB-C and it's also very compact. Uh, so then that is then connected using a patch cable where uh, based on Colby's instructions again just swapped um, some pairs and then plugged that into the PoE injector. There's also then the 12, or it's actually 48 volts there, but it go, the 12 volts from the car goes through that um, DC-DC converter and becomes 48 volts. And then here is the cable uh, from the Ethernet adapter that I modified and plugged into the cable of the phased array. And then obviously the rest is history. Plugged it in, wired it up, got a zap, got the smell of burning electronics briefly. This is the component um, that I think burnt. It's right near the Ethernet um, connector on the PCB board. If you can help me ID this part, maybe I can replace it. I did bring a soldering iron on our trip. 
Um, but yeah, so was my downfall using the adapter in the wrong direction? Was it bad Ethernet wiring? My hunch is that you can't use the adapter in the method I've used, so I'll probably, if I can complete this project, go back to either methods uh, B or A. One small positive was that the cost of the dish that I've destroyed was only $199. In Australia, the price of Starlink hardware has varied greatly from over $1,000 down to $199. Um, yeah, but if you can help me find either a cheap refurb or maybe one that I can scavenge parts from. Yeah, so keen to see your ideas and comments below on how I can complete the project. Um, yeah, so I thank you for watching.